Hello, YouTube. <laughs> oh, boy. It looks like we are officially back to living in a van, and it is a mess because I spent the day um, trying to finish up moving the RV and configure uh, blue for uh, full-time living. You can see I have the inverter on right now. It is charging through the system. The electricity is flowing through the alternator, coming through the cable. The switch is turned on, coming through our inverter, and it's 13.6 volts, which is enough to run the rice cooker. You can see I have a multi-plug outlet hooked up here and a cheap Dollar Tree um, extension cord going down. You can see the van is configured for living in. I am actually outside of Dollar Tree right now. I picked up some last minute supplies. Um, because we're going to try to cook up the last of the food. I had to toss quite a bit of um, food, basically rotted vegetables that I didn't get to. But essentially, I have some leftover rice that I'm going to eat, heat up to eat later. But I have some pork here. I might only be able to cook part of it and throw the rest away because I, I can't store it. It's, you know, cold food. I did buy some more items here. I forgot to pull out the, the oil from the RV. So we'll have oil in the RV ready to go. But I bought some Dollar Tree bought some more um, some Parmesan cheese and of course snacks to comfort myself and some sugar here <laughs> we're back to crafty food again you know junk food and of course for my squirrel friends if, if uh, we happen to run into them again because uh, squirrels seem to come out quite a bit when I'm living in a van I did buy a new um, a container here a new bottle of chopped onions and of course you know our magical ingredients had to get some more soy sauce. These are all Dollar Tree items, by the way. And Badia. Badia's in there somewhere. I just find it here. Can't cook without Badia. I actually had quite a few bottles of Badia left, and they are in the RV, but I forgot to remove them. You know how you, you get in a rush when you're, you know, moving and stuff and trying to get everything ready, and you forget it. So, I got a brand new uh, Badia Complete from the Dollar Tree just now. So we're going to cook up um, this, I think this is pork, the last of the pork chops. So I don't even have everything all organized. Things are kind of a mess, as you can see here. It is a mess, sort of. At least the, the sleeping area is um, fairly made. I should be able to sleep, stealth camp. Had to get all my clothes and stuff ready because tomorrow I have to go back to work and look normal. So we'll see how that goes. Um, it is obviously a little bit stressful. It is dark and temperatures dropping so my plan is to just go ahead and um it looks like the rice cooker i don't know if it's on or not it's plugged in it's not coming on I don't know why this is not on it's plugged in is it plugged in and the green is plugged in it must not be turned on i have the multi-plug outlet but i probably don't have it turned on because See, the multi plug outlet is there, and yeah, see the light's off here. So it wasn't on. Now it's on. I don't know if you can see the red light came on. That will turn the rice cooker on. So the rice cooker right now, see the light? Light should be coming on. Yeah, the light's on now. So it's on warm mode. I do need to remove that foil, whatever that was there. So that heating element will come on. I'm going to go ahead and um, put the, the pork, which is chopped on. I'm going to take this pork and put it in here and try to cook it up. So let me go ahead and do that right now. I won't be able to run the camera because I don't have my um, my mount. I don't even know where that is. It should be somewhere in here. Can't find it. If it's not here, it's in the RV still. All right, as you can see, I have my, um, my pork steak there. I have one more, which I don't think I'm going to cook up. I'm probably going to end up tossing that. This has kind of been sitting out all day, so hopefully I cook it enough that it's not spoiled. <laughs> I hope I don't get sick. <laughs> I do have some uh, Imodium AD in the event that I do get sick off this, but I think I'll be okay. Um, you know, it's been fairly cold. It was frozen before, and it thawed out, and was in the RV until I, I, I finished up, you know, storing the RV and um, grabbed the food at the last minute. I forgot about the food, honestly. So we're going to season this like we normally do, and um, you know what? I forgot the soy sauce. So, let me go ahead and, this is, um, not Kikoman, but the cheap Dollar Tree. It is called, um, Hisakawa he soy sauce. All-purpose seasoning. So, we're going to go ahead and use this Dollar Tree uh, soy sauce on this. 
So let me open that up and uh, get that put on there. All right, we got our soy sauce open and ready to go. At this point, we're just going to sprinkle a little bit on here. I don't know how strong the soy sauce is. I'm not sure what the flavor is, but hopefully it'll taste good. We're just going to sprinkle a little bit on here to give it some saltiness. Even though the uh, the body it does have some saltiness. Not too much. I think that's enough. And normally I would have the, the soy sauce and stuff that I had bought for the RV, but I forgot it. So getting replacement ingredients from Dollar Tree was about 3 or $4. So not too expensive because it's a dollar each. I am going to go ahead and put this here. The rice cooker. And set it on high. And I have to put the lid on it. Now I don't have my strap. So normally I have a strap and I have a um, a box here, you know, a wooden box. But for now, we're just going to use this for now. Because this is all set up as it is right now. So it's on high and I don't know if you can hear the inverter. Let me show you what it actually looks like when it's cooking. Put this stuff up here. But, um, yeah, this is my, my little garbage bag. You can see the foil from the... Um, Got to try to keep clean while you're doing this. But anyhow, I'll be dumping this trash here at... Uh, I think Dollar Tree usually has a trash can. If not, I'll go buy it someplace that has a trash can to dump the stuff but I wanted to show you how it, see how the temperature the, the temperature put the um, the voltage here I know you can't see it on the screen here maybe maybe if I get closer it says like 12.1 12.2 which is pretty low my um, my battery pack here the battery that's in here is weak I may end up having to buy a new battery to make this possible because uh, this thing hadn't been charged. I did run it and try to charge it, but it's not holding a charge. We'll see what happens. This should not drop, like, if it drops to 11.8 or 11.9, the thing will start beeping and not working. So, the, the, also my wiring, you know, might be old and frayed. I may have to replace wiring, and I haven't really inspected the van. I just left it like it was and, you know, started it all up, hooked everything back up. And I'm missing cables and wires and other stuff. So I've been picking things up at Dollar Tree. And I'm still out here outside Dollar Tree right now in the dark here. It's, you know, nighttime now. But um, trying to cook this meal up to see if I need anything else. I thought I had forgotten forks and spoons. But I don't know if you see that stacks canister down there that has some sp um, spoons and forks. One of the problems with um, moving back and forth between different vehicles, you know, like the RV, the the van, the Vibe and all that, is stuff got spread out everywhere. So at this point, my first night here, I'm assessing what's missing. And I came here specifically so I could buy, like, I needed a new um, USB charger because this one's only 1.1 amp. I bought one from, um, what, two brushes, all this stuff that I had in the RV, but I accidentally left it forgot to take it out but I did buy like a new USB thing those of you who are wondering where you pick them up this one has the the 2.1 amp two you know two plugs so I can actually have two charging and on it itself on the, the text here it says it's 2.1 amp so it's more powerful than this one so I'm gonna get rid of that green one that green one's only one amp I want a two amp charger but you can see what I consider essential supply is some oil some um, chopped onions of course, body, uh, electrical, you know, for USB charging, and some snacks. Um, and then you're like, why are snacks essentials? Uh, because this is um, kind of stressful. <laughs> I know I have a lot of experience, but coming back in, this is the first time I had to get water. I also had to do laundry. I had to, there was just a lot of stuff that had to be done to prep suddenly to move back into the van. And I'm probably going to go ahead and toss this into a trash can. I'm not going to try to cook the second piece up. And um, the rice I'll have to heat up later on the food. So you can see it's starting to steam up in there. So it is starting to cook up somewhat. So we'll see if uh, the inverted cooking system's working. Once I get the food cooked, I'll go ahead and have dinner and probably try to figure out where I'm going to park. Um, as this is the first night, I'm still testing systems. You know, trying to make sure that the inverter cooking system is still cooking. My um, phones will charge hopefully, and I can wake up and get to work tomorrow. I don't freeze to death tonight. I don't think it's going to get that cold, maybe in the 50s. I'll have to check the temperature, what it's going to be. But it's fairly cool, and I do have a sleeping bag underneath the, um, the sheet there. Now, where I stored the RV, 
I can go get stuff during the daytime when they're open. So it's somewhat used as storage right now. I didn't run to get everything because, you know, it's closed right now and I was close to Dollar Tree. I don't know if you can see my um, carbon monoxide detector there. I recommend everyone get one. I've got to straighten it out, obviously. It's, it's hanging diagonal. And I have to close all my curtains and get everything working and um, just make sure I can stealth camp in this thing again. Oh, I see I'm missing my fans. So, no, actually, I do have a fan there. So there's a fan there. There's a fan here. So I got two fans. I think I'm only missing one fan. I think I took one of the fans and took it out and put it inside the RV or was using it in the Vibe, and I didn't put it back. But at least I got two fans. That means I can put one on me. And you're like, why would you put a fan on if it's cold? Well, the fan helps to circulate the air. So I like to have air circulating in here when I'm sleeping so it doesn't feel all stuffy and sticky, you know, like humid, humid and damp. Um, so tonight's strategy is just to... Um, or plan, rather, than strategy, is just to try to make it through the night and assess what's missing. But I think I picked up everything. I don't really want to leave this Dollar Tree till I cook the food and start to eat and see if I'm missing anything. Because Dollar Tree is going to close soon, and um, it's still here. Otherwise, I have to head out to Walmart or something, you know. But I'd rather just buy what I need from Dollar Tree, close it out, dump my trash... Maybe to dump it over there. I don't know. Somewhere. Public trash can. And um, basically, get back into survival mode. I think the hardest part about doing all this is just um, psychological. You know, it's like physically I know I can do it. Um, I mean, there are some physical issues like just making sure everything is set up and ready to go. I obviously never finished installing this um, radio. I mean, it's working, but it's never, you know, it's not mounted nice or anything like that. But as far as supplies, I didn't even get much supplies. I just shoved what I had in the um, that was in the the RV. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna throw this one away. I'm not gonna cook the second piece. And you can see I just shoved what food I had. Uh, so that's gonna go to work tomorrow for sandwiches. And I have some cheese <laughs> and some soda. And that's about all I salvaged. Just a bunch of soda cans. So you know. It's not exactly like prepping, pep prepping. I did um, manage to pull out the um, the portable stove there, and of course the rice cooker that came from the RV. So, but I only have one um, one pot. I don't know where the other pot is. I had to clean this one out and put it here. So, I know I have another pot at the um, at my work. So I may bring that and put it in the van and have two pots because two pots are important. One can be used to cook rice, and then the other one can cook the meat dish to go with the rice. Right now, I had to take the rice out, and I put it in a bag. So, yeah, and I'm going to throw this back in with the, um, sorry about the focus, because it is dark, and the camera's having an issue focusing. But this is rice from earlier today that I made. I had, um, for those of you wondering, I, I made rice with Salisbury steak. You know, that the six-pack that you buy from either Walmart or um, Aldi's. I cooked all that up and had rice, rotisserie steak. I mean, Salisbury steak and um, frozen vegetables. Try to eat up all the food. So, you can see this is cooking up nicely. It's smelling like a Chinese kitchen here. You can see all that steam coming out. It is indeed cooking. Now, when I lifted that, I think it might have turned it into warm mode. So, I'm going to put it back into high mode by pushing down on it. So, I have to push down on that switch. And you can hear the inverter is whining. What I'm going to do is flip this meat by taking a fork and just flipping it over and then I will adjust it again. Can't do that with the camera running because we're not mounted or anything, so let me pause this and go ahead and flip it. I'm having a problem pausing here. Hmm. I know some of you thought my cooking in the RV was bad. <laughs> this is cooking in the, uh, the van. In the rice cooker. So... I'm going to flip that meat over, and you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to season this side. I don't know if you can hear the, um, the inverter has gone down to low mode. Put this stuff here out of the way. It's going to take, a, it's going to take me probably about a week or so to get back into the swing of doing things and obviously cleaning this area out and organizing myself a little bit better. Right now, it is a mess because things just got shoved in here and moved around. I am going to open this up and... Um, pour some seasoning on this side. 
and you might be wondering why I'm filming all this. It's just to show people what it really is like, um, kind of cook in the pan, how I cook the food. You know, you don't have to... I suppose I could have gotten cold cut sandwiches and stuff to eat today instead of um, trying to cook a real meal. But I had all this meat left over and I don't want to throw it away even though there's probably about like a dollar or so worth of meat. You know, I could have I could have tossed it and bought a sandwich and, or, or bought um, some, um, what's that, um, rotisserie chicken from Walmart you know, for five or six dollars and called it a day. But... I thought it would be interesting to uh, try to cook up my leftover food for you guys and, and show you what I do. So, that is the badia, and I don't think I'm going to add any more um, soy sauce on it. And all I'm going to do right now is obviously seal things up, close the lid, put it on high heat, and I'm thinking how I'm going to eat this. So I got my, um, my rice, which I'm going to toss in there to warm up, and I'll eat it right out of the, um, the bowl, you know, out of the, uh, the pot here. So we put the lid back on it, and we kick it back into high mode. Right now it's on low, so I'm going to switch it right here. I'm going to, there, it's in high. You can hear the inverter cooking, turning on. And believe it or not, at this point I can actually drive around. So I have this. I have my uh, plates if I want it. I'm not going to serve it on plates. I'm just going to eat right out of the rice, um, the rice pot. And I have some water that I can wash up. The issue is where you do this kind of stuff so, you know, people don't bother you. This um, Dollar Tree doesn't seem too bad right now, although they're getting ready to close soon. So if I'm sitting out here when they close, it obviously doesn't look good. Cops could stop by trying to figure out what I'm doing. But for now, it's okay. So I'll probably just go ahead and stay here or I could drive around. Kind of um, in my head, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to park for tonight. Uh, because that's one of the biggest issues is deciding where you're going to sleep. You know, because... Um, that's probably one of the, the critical parts to making this work when you're urban stealth camping is knowing where you're going to sleep. I already have some rough ideas. I have like about two or three different locations in mind just in case there's an issue with any of them. And I'm going to be heading there, but I think I'll do that after I finish cooking and eating for the simple fact that you don't want to go park where you're going to sleep and be cooking and eating there because it, it kind of makes you, um makes you visible you know it makes it so people look at you and notice you like right now people will notice me but most of them think i'm just sitting in my car because that's what it looks like outside it just looks like i'm sitting in my van having the light on doesn't help but i do have the light on for filming um basically we're just waiting for the food to get finished so i'll go ahead and pause the video and then come back and show you what we've got all right as you can see the food is uh nearly finished cooking look at that look at that steam I'm releasing steam all into my car here. Probably should open some more windows. I do have the door open here, so things are kind of venting out. It is cold outside, not not freezing cold. You can see it is um, steaming up quite nicely. I am going to go ahead and um, pour my rice in there and let the rice heat up. You know, the rice will absorb the the moisture coming off the um, the pork chop or the pork steak. So that is um, going to warm up my rice. And that's going to be tonight's dinner. It's not like super fancy or anything like that. But considering this is kind of, I'm going to turn the heat back up here. Because, you know, when you open it, it kind of drops low. It's still on high. Okay. So I can actually drive somewhere right now. I see I do have my, um, my strap here. I can strap it. I can strap the lid on there if I want to, which I might before I travel. Um, let me figure out how this is all arranged. But anyhow, I may build a new box, or I might keep the little plastic one. The the little plastic bin I got from Dollar Tree, I was just trying to show people how they could build a box without really building one. We had a clear one that ended up not being used, you know, so this can be used for storage of stuff. And, of course, the wooden spoons and stuff to stir things. Um, but for now, I am just uh, thinking that I may drive somewhere to to eat or just sit here and let it keep cooking. I don't know. I did throw away the stuff into the trash over there. Um, you know, the, the my trash bin here. So I got a new trash bin. <laughs> Produce a lot of trash. You want to get trash, get rid of it as soon as you make it. As soon as possible. Okay. What that will do is help to control the smell in your vehicle. As well as keep um, pests like bugs and stuff away. Because you're getting the food out of here. Food, they smell a mile away. So... 
I do need to reorganize the place a little bit better. I need to move that um, that stove because having it sitting here, someone looking in can obviously tell something's going on here. And having a big pile like this is not good either. So I want to clear all this so it becomes like a regular seat that somebody can sit in. And if somebody looks through the front, this looks like a normal vehicle. It doesn't look like someone's living in it. Because right now it looks like somebody's living in it because stuff's just dumped everywhere. And um, that container there is uh, one that I had bought from... Um, from Goodwill and it's a water dispenser so I don't really like it as much as I liked my soap dispenser remember the one that I had a soap dispenser that I converted to become a water jug and it dispensed it it was nice and small and compact this one's a little bit bigger but since my soap one broke I'll go ahead and keep using this one for now and that water I don't really drink from I use it to wash my hands and stuff <coughs> but what I find actually more useful than that is this I have um, Zephyr Hills, you know, the, what is it, a 16 or 24, no, this is a 23.7 fluid ounce bottle, and it has a spigot thingy on here, and you just open it up and just pour it out and squirt it on your hands or whatever to wash your hands. This is actually more useful than that, so, but it doesn't carry as much water. So I may transfer that water to this to use. I also have my little squirter thingy, which you can see things are just somewhat scattered everywhere, I'll have to find it, but... <clears throat> the little water spray thingy but it was kind of stuck so I'll need to oil that so tonight is like I said just um, getting reacquainted with van life um, getting my brain situated you know to shift back to survival mode and um, making sure all the system work it looks like my inverter cooking system is working again and I'm gonna have a nice hot meal here in a moment so until next time everyone take care god bless you all i hope that you're staying safe wherever you are and if it's cold where you are you're managing to stay warm if you're burning anything to keep yourself warm remember to get yourself some carbon monoxide or a carbon monoxide detector with batteries check it out make sure it works and hook it up so that it'll go off if you have carbon monoxide <clears throat> and also if you're cooking and stuff try to have adequate ventilation i have my window my door here wide open Anyhow, I'm going to sign out, and um, maybe, I'll, maybe I won't sign out yet. I'll show you what the meal looks like before I eat it, so you can see what all this effort was for. All right, the rice cooker finished, and I shut off the cooking system. See, everything is turned off. I basically just shut off the, um, the connection to the inverter and turn the inverter off, and that'll shut it off too. So right now the car is charging. We can see the food is steaming hot. Meat looks completely cooked. It is pork. You can tell if it's cooked, if it's white or not on the inside. I do have some soda here and my little table up. If you're wondering about how all this stuff is set up, you'll want to watch the uh, Cooking with Denoy playlist uh, with the inverter cooking system and the little table and the construction of all this. That was done in previous episodes. I've just reinstalled it to, to use it tonight. Mm. And I've spilled soda all over my uh, camera here. <laughs> not good. I could have wiped this off real quick. All right. Without stopping the filming. But anyhow, the food is done. You can see it looks pretty good. Not bad for uh, first first meal of the night. I mean, uh, my first meal back in the van. I'm going to attempt to try to cut this with my um, spoon here. I think I'm going to put this down in case it spills. I don't want to knock my... Um, my table over here. Normally I would use a knife or something. I might have to use a knife. This this is a little bit rubbery. This um this pork. I'm trying to get a good spot where I can cut it. Looks like a nice big chunk of fat there. Rubbery fat. I know some of you are thinking rubbery fat is not the best thing to eat, but I love eating fat. I know it's bad for you, please. I know. But um on a night like this where it's a little bit chilly, having a, a nice chunk of fat. Let me try to cut that little piece that's still stuck right there. I might have to put this on a plate, you know, and try to eat like a normal person instead of eating out of the, the pot here. Let me just pull that. There we go. So I got a, a chunk of skin, a chunk of um, the outer skin here, the fat. And we're going to go ahead and have this. This is a uh, kind of fattening food. Mm. Tastes like pork. Now, 
this kind of pork really would have been good to grill on a barbecue over fire. Possibly like on that little rocket stove thingy, you know, a little miniature rocket stove. But because of where I am right now in the city, it's not possible. But cooking in the rice cooker isn't that bad. It's actually like frying it in the RV, you know, like trying to fry it or even bake it in the um, the toaster oven. It's just, uh, you have to adapt. The rice cooker system is so versatile. You can use it um, you know, to make rice. You can use it as a frying pan to fry stuff up. In this case, we're kind of frying and baking. And you can see it was enough to, to cook this raw piece of meat. And, you know, if you wonder what all I can cook in the rice cooker, you want to watch the uh, Cooking with the Noi playlist where you get to see me cook everything from um, steak to ribs to chicken to pizza. <laughs> basically anything you can think of that you need heated up anyhow i'm gonna go ahead and sign out i hope you found this video entertaining if not um informative and i hope that where you are wherever you are you're eating well and staying safe please take care of yourselves god bless you all i hope you're managing to stay warm if you're in a cold environment and um if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit the subscription button. If you like what you see, make sure you hit the notification bell so that you'll be alerted as to when I upload new videos or do a live stream. Until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. Bye-bye now.